Hey friends, this is Christopher Davis Shannon, and today I want to talk to you about how to memorize songs. This is something that I'm constantly asked about because I have a very broad repertoire of tunes that I can pull out at any moment, and I think it's something that anyone can build. But we forget that this is a skill just like learning to practice or learning how to play an instrument, and we need to actively exercise it, but we also need to understand some little tricks that we have in internalizing and memorizing music. So before we even address memorization itself, I need you to ask yourself a question. Let's pretend that we're going to pick a song to memorize. The first question you need to ask yourself is, do you know the song? Have you actually learned the song? Could you hum the melody to that song? Are you still fighting over certain techniques that are in that song? Are you still questioning yourselves in tougher passages of the song? Because the issue is, if we try to memorize things without already knowing the tune and the technical side of how to play it, we're going to really embrace memorizing the mistakes that we constantly make. So the first thing you need to do is iron out all the kinks in the song before you try to memorize. If you're second guessing yourself the whole time, there's no point in memorizing it because you're going to be memorizing mistakes. So once we pick a song that we already know intimately that we want to commit to memory, we need to ask ourselves what we're really memorizing. It's not just this abstract set of sounds and shapes. There are really different types of memory that we need to think about and what we are memorizing at any point. So first up is a type of memory that we all have and use every day, which is oral memory or what we hear and are able to sing back. This is why I asked in the previous segment whether you could sing the song that you want to play, because if you can't sing it, you're not going to be able to memorize it because you're already going to be trying to apply that to the instrument, and that's an extra hurdle. So the first thing you can do when you start memorizing a song is simply sing the melody. And this goes for even if you're doing a solo piece on uke to just sing the melody. It doesn't matter whether there are lyrics to this whatsoever. But the thing is, oral memory is actually pretty weak. Um, a lot of it occurs in our short-term memory. If I sing you a melody, you can probably only sing about five to seven notes back to me before you forget. And that goes for me as well. This is obviously a skill that we can develop a little bit further, but humans are limited. So oral memory, just being able to hear something and automatically remember it and put it on our instrument is not really the strongest tool that we have. Now, many of us are visual learners. We like looking at the page, but there's actually more to this. So when we're memorizing, obviously we want to look at the sheet music. We want to look at the tablature. We want to look at the chord chart and try to commit to that itself to memory. That's our roadmap of the song that we are looking at. We need to understand that. But we also, through visualization and our visual memory, we can start thinking about the motions that our hands are making while we're playing. The motion between a C and a G seventh chord is important. What are the motions that you're making? The more that we analyze this and think about the tiny bits of what we are doing in this grand scheme, the easier it is to memorize because we're not memorizing this huge form. That's not something that our brains are really set up for is, is vast memorization. We really memorize smaller parts. So when we visualize things, think of breaking your sheet of music up into smaller pieces, little chunks and memorizing them. And next we have what is probably the most important to a lot of people, which is physical memory, or what we in the music world very often call muscle memory. Now, obviously, our muscles don't have a memory. They don't have brains. What muscle memory is, is really our brain interpreting the correct messages to send to our fingers at any given time. And this type of memory especially comes through repetition. 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 This is the key to most memorization. In the end, is repetition, but it's about how do we utilize rep repetition in the practice room to get it to commit to memory. But our physical memory, as I was talking about before, visual memory in thinking about the movements of the hand 
is very, very important because we're, then we're involving our entire body in the process. We are not just abstractly thinking about things. Now, lastly, we have structural memory, which is maybe the most important thing when we're learning an entire piece. Structural memory is pretty much how our brain puts together a story. And a song is a story, right? We have different sections. We have an introduction. We have a verse. We have a chorus. You know, or we're playing something in, say, sonata form or, or something like that. It doesn't matter. There is structure to this. And one of the things we have to actually recognize and think about and analyze is the structure of the song itself. Again, not just this big grand picture, but what is the structure of the song? Is there an A section? And is there repetition in that A section? Many times there is. And then we have a B section or a bridge that we see very frequently in popular music. And it's important when we're learning a song to think about and even highlight in our music these specific sections. But we need to also look for, again, repetition in the forms that we have. Many times when we're learning a song, we think of it as being, say, 128 bars long. But really, it's 16 measures that are repeated throughout the entire tune. So if we memorize the form, which is much easier to memorize A, A, B, A, versus thinking of 64 measures of music, and then we can break that down further. So now that we're thinking about the different types of memories, let's talk about how we can really utilize this in the practice room to memorize songs. So now that we understand a little bit more how memorization works, let's memorize a song. And I want you to keep in mind that I'm going to show you my method, but also talk about some other methods that I know some of my friends use in memorization. And what works for me might not work for you. All of our brains work differently, and that's okay. We need to find the way that works for you to trick your brain into remembering music. But there are some tried and true solutions that musicians have been using for years. So let's talk about those. So first, pick a tune that you know, that you can already sing the melody to. And on day one, that's what I want you to do. Take time the entire day and just sing that melody. You can sing it in your head. It doesn't matter. You don't need to even touch your instrument. But what I also want you to do is listen to as many recordings of that song as you can find. I want you to hear how other players interpret it, how other players approach that song. But this is also helping with our auditory memorization because we hear time and time again through repetition what that melody is. And melody in music is what informs everything else. The harmony follows the melody. The rhythm very much complements the melody. So we need to first learn the melody of the song. And that's why vocalization is so important. Sing that song and listen to that song before you bother trying to remember it. Now the next step is take that melody and even if you're just playing the chords to the song and singing, try to pick it out on the instrument because it's going to give you a different perspective on it. And one of the things that we need to do to help internalize things is make our brain think. We've talked about this in random or interleaved practice that we need to trick our brain into not going into autopilot mode. And it's very common that that happens when we're trying to memorize things because we have repetition and repetition and repetition. And eventually we stop thinking about what we're actually doing. And that's not going to help us in memorizing it. So approach the song in a different way. And I know for the first day or two, this all might seem a little silly, like we're not memorizing anything, but stay with me. Really learn that melody first. Then I want you to play through the chords. You know, think of this as any old pop tune. Maybe it has three or four chords in it. But I don't want you to think about while you're playing it just the chords that you are playing, but the motion between those chords. How one chord links into another. Our structural memory as well as our physical memory likes to see the movement between objects, not these static bits that we are putting together. It's important for our brain to understand how they all link up. And this is something that I really want to hammer home is that analyzing the music and understanding the music is the best way to memorize it. The more deeply that we understand what we are doing, the less repetition we need because we have an intimate understanding. Now on the third day, after you're comfortable with singing the melody and just playing the chords, the very basics of it, I want you to put on a metronome 
and practice the entire piece very slowly. This will get us away from any technique flaws that we have. It's hard to cover those things up when we're playing slowly, even if it's a very fast piece, and gives our brain time to think about all of the different sections of the tune. This is just kind of a failsafe to make sure that we actually know how to play the song before we try to commit it to memory. Now, on the fourth day, when I'm actually memorizing a song, I use a method called chunking. See, our brain doesn't actually memorize these huge concepts. We piece together these smaller concepts into one larger concept. And in music, we have measures or these subdivisions of beats. So what we can do is we can divide that into phrases. We can think about the song, My Blue Heaven. When whippoorwills call, that's the first phrase. It's only you know, a bar and a half long. So let's memorize that first. Choose these first little shapes of lines and memorize one or two bars at a time and just play it now through repetition in these tiny segments. And when you can do it three times in a row without any mistakes, it's likely committed to memory. So what we do is we move on to the next phrase, the next two groupings of bars, or, or it could be four. And we do the same thing there. And we feel comfortable with that. We go back and we put these two chunks together. So we now have a larger chunk. And we do this method until we put all of the pieces together. If you think about it, when you're reading something, just printed word, if you're reading really fast, you won't notice many typos in the, middles, in the middle of words because our brain automatically puts a lot of these concepts together through the first and last letter of a word and just analyzing the length of it. And we do the same exact thing in music. We're not really reading every single individual note on the page once we know the song. We're memorizing these phrases, these groupings of notes. And I find it highly beneficial to just take out a pen or a highlighter and highlight my different phrases of music. And if you're memorizing simpler pop tune or something like that, something that's only a few chords, we can use this chunking method throughout, you know, just the A section of the tune or the verse, and then do it throughout the bridge as well, and then put it all together because we likely have a very repetitive form. And this could take a few days. Don't try to memorize an entire piece in one afternoon. Build upon it day after day. Again, repetition, not just over and over and over, but repetition on numerous days. This consistency is very important to internalize things. By the end of seven days of doing this, you should be able to memorize at least the A section, let's say eight measures of a song. And I know it seems like a very little bit to use this method with only eight measures over a few days, but the more that we memorize things, the easier that it becomes. And why is that? The reason is that, A, we start to recognize commonalities in music. Music is not this big, unique concept. There's lots of repetition from song to song. We can even think about chord progressions. The five foot two is the same exact chord progression as Please Don't Talk About Me While I'm Gone and a host of other songs. As soon as we start to recognize these similarities, you'll realize that you've memorized not just one song, but many songs. You see this in pop tunes today that we have very common harmonic progressions or chord structures that we go through that are repetitious. So it's important to identify those so that we're not rememorizing things that we've already memorized. Now, this is how I memorize music is with chunking for the most part and singing. But one of the other big things that I use is visualization in memorization. I don't think that you need your instrument in your hands. Once you have committed everything to what we call the muscle memory, we, we know where things are already going and what we need to do next physically. But we can visualize all of those movements while we're humming the song in our head. And this gives our brain a different perspective in how to memorize things. Now, another method that you can try is actually working backwards. Something that is a failing of the chunking method is that we often memorize the beginning of the song and just keep adding on to that. And thus we play the beginning of the song, the first chunk, probably 20 more times than we play the last chunk of the song. And that's a problem. So what we can do is we reverse it and we start our chunks from the back. So we throw this whole concept of thinking just about the melody out the window because now we're just taking chunks towards the end. So you can start with the last two bars and then the last four bars. And then we end up hitting this end piece a lot more and we'll likely see that there is repetition in melodic content there. Repetition is key. 
Repetition is key. So this is how I memorize songs, but how do you memorize songs? Let me know. I'm always looking for what other tools people use. But the big thing is don't be intimidated by memorization and feel that you can't do it. It is a skill that comes with time and practice, just like playing an instrument. I'll see you all next week.